three four one two three four one two three four one two three four. Spend the first five minutes of the show talking about how I just won 5 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Superb. Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Ultimate Pool Mini Series. We're going to be focusing on the Women's Series tonight. I'm joined by the Women's Series number one, Harriet Haynes. Uh, good evening, Harriet. Um, judgment Day for the, for the ladies tonight, isn't it? It's uh, the final group games for everybody. Everyone trying to get themselves in that top half to get into the main event for tomorrow and the bottom half of the groups get into the, the plate event, but it's crunch time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a lot of groups are wide open, uh, which is great to see going into ladies' night on a Saturday evening. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess we're going to see uh, a few crunch matches tonight, aren't we? A few, uh, there's going to be, well, even our first one, there's still points need to be played for. There's going to, a lot could happen. Yeah, anything and anything could happen in this group as well. You know, Tragic is a superb player uh, and, and Kerry needs to win to top the group. Um, but anything can happen. Uh, th all three people can actually qualify, so that's really good to see. Yeah, and we're going to see that throughout the night because we've got quite a few matches coming to you tonight. Let's have a look at the order of play. And our first match, as we just alluded to, Sarah Trudgett versus Kerry Griffiths. Sarah does need to get the win to get in that top half. Mika Rooney will be then taking on Sharon Lunn. And then that's a, that's a pretty tough match as well to call because that's going to be big for both players there. Ilda Machado then taking on Kirsty Lee Davis. Vicky Lomax taking on Holly Can, And then we're going to have Chloe Payne taking on the four times world champion Emma Cunningham. And then Harriet yourself, you'll be playing Cheryl Dixon to complete our night. For yourself, let's deal with your match first. You're all but there. Guess you, you, how much are you looking at the group? How much are you looking, trying to work out? Do you need a certain number of frames or are you just going to go out and play? I'll just go out and play, uh, try and get the win. Um, I want to play a second place finisher tomorrow morning, so hopefully we can uh, get across the line and get yeah. the win. And, yeah, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got six good matches for you tonight. Three of them will be on YouTube, and then we are on the Ultimate Pool app and Ultimate Pool TV. If you haven't yet subscribed, then make sure you go and cross and subscribe so you can watch Harriet and all the other matches that we'll have live on there. And there is a discount code BF10 for the Black Friday discount code, which you can use as well. Uh, just about enough from us, although you're going to run across the, the commentary box with David Hine for our first match. So I think it's about time we got the match on. So over to David Hine in the commentary box. Wow. 
welcome to this group one match between Kerry Griffiths and Sarah Chudget. Top of the table clash. Race to five. 40 minutes match clock. 15 second shot clock for the last 10 minutes. Kerry is two from two going into a final game. Sarah has one win and one loss. Kerry been very, very good in her opening two matches, only dropping three frames. Winning the other ten, and I'm happy to announce, as always, Ultimate <coughs> Pool's number one female player, Harriet Haynes. Thanks for making the trip over from the arena. It's a long way. It was a long, long way. So Sarah's won the, uh, won the lag, and she's going to break first, and she's got a very good break. Yeah, I just saw her in the outer arena this afternoon playing her game against uh, Nicola Oaks. Um, she definitely seemed to have a powerful break. And uh, obviously, with, with uh, Sarah losing her first match, or her second match earlier, uh, Manvir can actually qualify, but Manvir is 2 0 down against Nicola Oaks. Yeah, um, I'm sure she wishes, wishes she could keep an eye. Right. on results in the other match Sarah but not able to do so it's definitely a bigger match for Sarah than it is for Kerry Kerry already safely through and you weren't lying Harriet just look at that That's a good break. but it's dry Really pushes the queue through though, mm. and that's where the power comes from. Stay keeps the queue nice and low, transfers all the power through the pack. Over half the balls are in the uh, other side of the, of the table. Yeah, and we haven't seen that very often over the weekend. Kerry will be familiar to just about everybody in the ladies' game. The last mini series, she reached the final, only to be beaten by Emma Cunningham who just looked like her name was on the trophy at w by that time and it reached the final tried to kiss the yellow out and move it away from the eight ball she yeah. hasn't done so for me she's gone second favourite in this frame now because she's going to have to play a, a dump shot here which gives Trudge the opportunity to get into the frame yeah kind of left her on uh, one of her problem balls this red but the I'm not sure the eight will pass if she gets that far so like the way she accelerates through the cue ball yeah she's very really, attacking really really like that it's a really positive action Now I was presuming when I saw the fixture, Harriet, that Kerry would go in favour, is that rightly? But from what I've seen so far, she's going to have her hands full here, so this is a bit more yeah. evenly matched than I th first thought. Well, I wouldn't be wanting to lay Sarah. That right, just, okay. That's, that's what I'm saying. I would not want to lay Sarah at whatever price, even money or 10 to 11, no matter what, I think cause it's very even. And here, she can actually play into the uh, red on the right hand side if she wants to off on this ball and she does exactly what she's done and she can probably count herself a little bit unfortunate there uh, yeah but where was the red going to go? true yeah I think she needed to hit her hard uh, just to try it but actually that's not such a bad effort is it? no and I'm guessing there's just never any thoughts of safety in what? Sarah's game. What's that? <laughs> exactly. It's just, is it is it that one-dimensional? It is quite, but, I mean, it's a little bit one-dimensional. Um, and I think she's just getting to grips of international rules. Um, so that might actually come into effect for, for uh, Kerry having a bit more experience. So because of that, she just chooses to go out all out attack maybe and you know what here's a really good example because she could play the uh, red she's on now push through and play the uh, loss of turn shot if she needs to and instead she, she tries to 
Well, she's given a, has she given herself a shot? If that cue ball had pulled up just an inch short, she may have been able to cut this red and dislodge the eight and the yellow, but I'm not sure she can see enough mm. of the red now. Swerve it and loss of turn. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. Oh, wow. Superb. Is the eight going to keep on running? It is, but this looks very, very thin. Can she see enough of the eight? I think she can see enough of the eight. Definitely not, I would say. Harry, no, I've seen the air. She can see enough of it to hit it. Yeah. Mean? Yeah, I meant to pot it. No, I don't think so. To pot it. Great hit. Sliding in. It's going to go it's close. close. Has close. it got the legs? No. Uh, but I'm like I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Yeah. Fantastic entertainment value, Sarah. Very Just much. Full on attack. I really rate her. She's such a good player. A really good addition to the, the series. Well, she's given another go. A one cushion escape. Very, very difficult to hit this thin enough and get it tracking towards a pocket. I'd be hitting on the right hand side because it's just it's just easier, isn't it? Here, you the white ball is actually tracking and off there. Um so if you wanna it's the more room for margin on the right going from the right hand side there. Than the left hand side. And when you left this pot in the opening frame of a match, you know, you're under it a little bit. Yes, we expect her to get this, but. This is tough. I think she played with an element of safety as well. Play with a bit of top spin. Yeah, so she has. She, and that's a really nice shot. Played. I mean, it's, it's a t tr tricky, tricky pot, isn't it? This isn't easy at all. Very difficult to judge the putting angle from such a distance. Opted to roll it. Looks Shot. good. Looks very good. Two or three times of asking there, but the constant pressure gave her the opportunities and she's taken it. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. And obviously, Trudge can finish top of the group with a nice win here. I think she needs to be too clear and work an hour now. She could be too clear and she can so win, win 5 3 and be top of the group. Are you conscious of that? Are you, are you bothered? Do you personally I, I, you want to top the group? Or you just oh, I, I would top the group. Oh, you yeah, want to top the yeah, group? Yeah, absolutely. Tomorrow morning you don't want to be playing someone who's come first. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. I'm assuming that makes sense. I mean, some some players though just aren't bothered, are they? They just just put me in the draw. I'm not bothered. You have to beat the best at any point. But obviously, it, it makes sense. Of course, it does. I'd, I'd prefer an easy route or easy, sorry, easier route. Only an easy route to about the last 16, last yeah, day. No, I don't. Yeah, absolutely. And in these series, there's no easy route. They're, they're just stacked. Strength in depth, as we watched. Oh. Kerry flirted with the centre pocket. Eventually, the keyboard found its way up into the top left hand pocket. But Sarah has put in a quick one and turned the table back over. I remember Kerry's semi final. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember her opponent. Was it Danielle? Was it Kirsty? Or was it Kirsty? I can't remember. They were the two losing semi finalists, and mm. I can't remember which one she's in. But what a fantastic performance. Every long ball she was left, she queued in beautifully. Yeah. And then when she got to the final, all of a sudden, she just started missing a few of them long ones that were going in so cleanly in the match previous. And it kind of. It didn't totally cost her, because Emma was very, very good in the final. But you can't give some of that calibre. Uh, you know, chance after chance. Chance after chance. Even Sarah's safety shots have an element of attacking. Mm. That's a bit, it's a bit scrappy, isn't it? Yeah, this could have some mileage in it. This frame. But what we have seen, at ultimate pool is. One shot can just change everything. Mm. All of a sudden, the table looks open. And that's the beauty of the rule set. Yeah, tactical exchanges. Here. Ah. That dump. That loss of turn shot here. That red. Uh, that that yellow onto red. Uh, so that would be a frame changer here. She's gonna play. 
Oh, the red hasn't dropped. It doesn't make too much difference. No, because you can't really get it. But you can get the reds away, can't you now? Yeah, as convoluted as it is at this moment in time, within three or four visits, this will be sorted out. Mm. I think she has to get these out now. Two and one here. Oh. One good shot from Trudge, and this frame is completely at her mercy. Cue ball stays on the table. Just look at the overhead, half of it's in the pocket now. This is tricky. Oh. That's very, very unlucky. Uh, is there a plant on? Is there a plant onto red, uh, red onto yellow, yellow onto red? No, it doesn't it's look like it. It's just about if there's enough room because for that if second it does, yellow to get through. All those yellows actually spring away. I think she's potted this. No, she hasn't. If she can play that. So there's, there's a three ball loss of turn shot here. Yeah, there is. Which would put Sarah in a very good position. Doesn't look like she's going that way. And the longer that red stays on the table, the more mileage there'll be in this frame because mm. it's limiting the attacking options. Swerve. Oh, got weight and so much into that. Ball in hand, however, it's not much use. So, and Nicola Oaks has just gone 3 0 up on Manveer. Wow. So, this second spot is very up for grabs. This is nasty. How much of that side cushion can she see that she's closest to? Can she see enough to hit the red that she's closest to? I think she has to play three cushions here. Bottom cushion, side cushion, and uh, and then uh, make sure you hit it enough, and hopefully it doesn't slide too much. And you contact the one on the top left-hand corner. We are finding this table is sliding quite a lot. Yeah, wow. It slid there as well. Yeah, it's it? just slid massively. Now she might feel a little embarrassed there, but that wasn't her. No. Well, obviously it's her fault. She played the shot, but just can catch you out a little bit this table. Yeah, Look she, at that. she wanted to be as close to that yellow as possible. As Trudge goes on the about our clearance. This is oh. Another <coughs> safety shot. She didn't land I'm a bit shot by that because it's a bit of a nothing shot, really. She, she gets ball in hand again. Yeah, she didn't land on it perfectly though, did she? So no. she's trying to just get back into a prime position. But if Kerry manages to get out of this, she she will be on a out on a clearance if she pots it especially. Oh, it's a foul. So you do have to make contact with a, a rail or a cushion after making contact with an object ball. Either the white or the object ball can. So that's why it was a foul. And once again, a slack positional shot, putting Trudge under pressure. Yeah, she's on nothing easy at all here, Harriet. So once again, you're going to have to see an, a safety shot, but... She's going to be tempted by the double. No, she's going to look into the plane to the middle. But yeah, play it off the red. Yeah. Looks she's good. Played it well. Looks very good. Is she back in prime position? Yes, she is. Almost. Almost prime position. Hold she off the red here, surely. Or can she screw in the gap between the eight and the yellow? I I wouldn't even touch in the red. I'd be screwing on the back. Top. Yeah, ah, natural. That's why you're here, Harriet. Yeah. Stop me looking silly. Sounding I, silly. You know, but if you, 
but playing into into the red there, anything could happen. You could you could not be on the next ball and you look silly on the stream. But if you play it naturally, you're always going to be on the ball. And you I just missed just the natural yeah. angle I did. I, oh, that's why I stopped. That's you're here. Yeah. That's yeah. Why you're here, <laughs> so take a look at Sarah's bio. You probably knew this already, didn't you? I did. Essex in England, two ta two European champion. County Finals champion as well. Mm. She looks a bit cold out there. It's a bit nippy out there. Yeah. It won't be later on. Hopefully not. Frame number three. Sarah continues with a massive breaking, but this time she's made a ball, and the cue ball is in the middle of the table, giving oh, look her at those yellows. options on both colour sets. Those yellows. You can plant the red down onto the yellow as well to open it up, like she just done. What a magnificent weapon to have in your armoury. She's very much a confidence player. Just thinking, can she get through to this one over the centre with a slight swerve? Yeah, I think she can. And then the other yellow might pass into the corner. Yeah, she it can just play plant. avoids playing this plant, which is missable. Very well cued. But there's a problem ball now, isn't there? There's a problem ball by that red. How do you, how do you solve that problem? Well, missing that actually helps her. If she yeah, gets back to the table. Because it would have been a difficult shot to get from that yellow over the centre pocket up up to the one in the breaking area. And that's almost a problem ball for Kerry as well, because it's disjointed. And she can play it now if she wants to. It's Good worth angle. mentioning how comfortable Kerry might be feeling out there at the minute. Yes, yeah, she's two from two, she's top of the table. It doesn't mean as much to her this match as it does to Sarah. But she's been kept off the table really so far. This is her first clear cut chance. Yeah, and she hasn't done anything wrong and she's two down. So she she could be thinking positively but because of that, or you could be thinking a bit more negatively. But Kerry's are normally a very positive player. Looks calm enough there. I was very impressed with the semi-final last time. I thought we were going to have a very competitive final on our hands. It wasn't to be. Mainly due to the extravagance of Emma. Eight balls off two cushions, eight balls off three cushions. Oh, I know. Snookered on the eight ball, just pot it, not a problem. Great shot. That's a yeah. really, really good shot. Really. They are not easy, are they? they? Not, that is top class. Have to time the cue ball perfectly to play those. And she's on the board. Right. It's poker face one. Sarah two. Is it just Trudge? Yeah, trying to think trudge. of a surname. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not a surname, a nickname. Trudge is just Trudge, yeah. But she's Trudge is around the table very well. So we take a look. Johnny Carr, 8.5 mil from Nottingham, 2019 European Team Champion. World Championship finalist and obviously the most important one at the bottom. Mini series finalist. <coughs> Thank you. 
two frames to one. Carry to break. And there's four frame. Cue ball is going to stay on the table, is it? A second, it's like a mirror image, wasn't it? Yeah. Mirror image at the first time she broke. The cue ball went the other way around. This time off to the left or the bottom of your screens. And again, stays on just about, but very, very dry. Using all of the pocket for her opening yellow there, Sarah. Some cracking games later on today as well. The whole lineup for the evening is very good. Yeah, two more games free on YouTube. As Sarah just misses one there. And then th the remaining games will be on the Ultimate Pool. Yeah, live on the Ultimate Pool app. Just a taste of these ones. Yeah, and there's a discount code as well, don't forget that. Black Friday, BF10. Saturday now. Oh, yeah, BF10. Sat Saturday, sorry, yeah. Get it for 49.99 for the whole year. Wow. Ultimate Pool will be live with over 500 hours in 2023. So if you love your pool, there's only one place to be. It's just constantly on, on my uh, yeah. PC, the yeah. Ultimate Pool app. It's really just constantly on. Masterclasses, there's games, players' championship, WEPF World Championships, tours from two Bur uh, Blackpool and one Birmingham, everything Masters. There's hours and hours and hours of footage, and I always think back to when probably 15, 16 years ago when I started getting into pool and I was hunting around YouTube for you know 30 second clips of McHill yeah and that's all you could get pretty much there was the odd game on there but nothing really and now there's just a huge amount brought to your screens by ultimate pool great shot there as long as she's on the one she's just cannon I she think is. she's okay here absolutely fine she can just push through as well and despite them three reds that are around the center pocket look pocket looking awkward there is a path. She doesn't have to move any of them. Mm. She needs to get down to the bottom of the table yeah. and play the one over the pocket, yeah. and then that opens the other two up. You can probably plant it as well. You can she could play the plant. I don't like the plant because it's just offset, and it might push the first ball onto the side cushion. I'd like to come all the way down the table here, Harriet. You know why I like the plant here? Go on, then, because she's going to play the plant now. Could, well, <laughs> yeah, but now, actually, it's, it's, she's in betwixt and between, isn't she? So she's actually going to have to screw back and then, like, play it confidently off the cushion because you, that red only goes into the left-hand pocket. So you kind of have to play this confidently and almost dig. And because we're using, in my opinion, the best cloth available to play on, it digs really well and it bites. It grips straight away, bites, that's the, gr that's the correct way, it bites straight away. If she just come down a little bit further though, she could have just rolled this red in the centre and everything was quite easy, I thought, but she's an added another dynamic in here and it obviously was playing on her mind and it's forced the error. Mm. Yeah, really tricky situation, she left herself in there. On other cloths you can't, you can't grip as well. And I'm not too sure how much experience she has on this cloth, like practicing wise. I know on my cloth I can I can what I can do. So I've gone lesser cloths and uh I'm like, oh so Judge can I let her arm go there? Yeah, I think that was an attempt at the long plant. I think it's the only shot she had really, that was an attacking option. Yeah, so she can actually play a, a red off the red now. And it kinda holds the white. Like she's done, but she's got. How's it going to land? Double kiss there. It's okay, but it's a little bit awkward. This is very thin, actually, from this angle we can tell. Playing so safe. much so she's taking it into the centre. Well, Playing safety. Safe. I thought she was taking it in the centre for a second. As Nicola Oates goes 4 0 up. So. Second place, very much up for grabs. Yeah. Now, 
Sarah's missed a bit of a trick there because if she could have got this tight up and up behind that yellow, this would have been very awkward. This is now a comfortable hit for Kerry, Ooh. and she nearly makes the pot. And that's not a bad lead. She's only left a long yellow down into the bottom, I feel. Yeah, I would be surprised if Trudge went for this. Well, from what I've seen so far, she doesn't turn much down. No, but she can... It's a simple safety, and I know yeah. what you're alluding to. Yeah. Wow. Is this... That's okay. It's a good shot. And I think that shows the magnitude of this match mm. certainly to Sarah because it's a must win match for no it's not it's not it's not oh because of the result with yeah. Nikki Oates now yeah she but she doesn't know that no, she doesn't obviously. know that yet she's still out there thinking she's got to win yeah and she probably wants to win well I know she wants to win because she's very competitive do you want to win yeah we'll do we'll do <laughs> That's a good shot. Taking no chances whatsoever. What, oh. a ch what a change in attitude from the first two. Yeah. She's sort of like gone all out in the first two and now she's trying to protect her lead as much as possible. Up and down here is the, is, is the way to go, I think. It's almost identical. A little bit unfortunate, that I, th I feel. <laughs> Cue ball making its way into the top le bottom left hand pocket. Will Sarah pull the trigger now? If she does, I think she should be taking the one on the left hand side first. Because that's the most awkward one, in my opinion. Wow. Right jaw, left jaw, round the edge and drop. This is tough. Playing the plant down, white ball's going to be close to the middle. Did it well. Nicely cued from the Essex lady. Just take a look at this again. Tried to stay out. Look at that. <laughs> Round the back of the eight. Yeah, I think that's the only way. Or you play it with a, a lot of right hand top and you play a double. Just go in the back of the eight. Not enough the left hand back. side to yeah. get close to this yellow. Yeah, the red was big, didn't it? It, didn't, it played so big. In a world of pain. That'll do. That's a legal shot. It shouldn't make too much difference, you feel, but... No, one... one is, uh, that yellow plays big as well, though, now. Because you, you're going to have to screw the red. Yeah, she can't see enough of it to get it in the middle, so she's got a shot to play here. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely right. Edging on the side of safety to guarantee a look at this red. Would have preferred to finish six inches short or six inches harder there. Yeah, this is tough, tricky. Quality. Beautiful. Quality. Absolutely beautiful. And this is to make it 2 2. 25 minutes have passed, but it's parity after four. Sarah 
Sarah Drake with her. Back to that thunderous break. It looked for a minute like the cue ball was heading towards that top right hand pocket, but it stayed on the table. He's kept her in this match, this break. He's, he's given her a chance on every occasion so far, unlike Kerry's, who has also given Sarah a chance after each of her breaks. So really, Kerry sh should be very happy being 2-2. Yeah, she'd be the happier of the players, I feel, right now. It's usually a question I'd ask you that, but we've kind of got there together. This is a good chance. Yeah. Well, I say that. It's a little bit tough, isn't it? You kind of have to take the one over the middle now. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you can see of it, you know. I think that's why she's turning it down. Trying to just get this red in behind and hasn't done so. And what, but what she has done there is the yellow on the right-hand side next to the red would have been an obvious ball to plant up to the top right. Mm. She's taken that option away. From Sarah. No, uh, so sorry, from Kerry. I would do. I would pot the one by the black, screw over, and play the loss of turn with the one one into the middle. Just brush off the right hand yeah. side of it and just drop the red in. Yeah, I like that. It's almost a guaranteed snooker. Yeah. That's okay. It's tough, it's tricky. If she was perfectly straight on the plant, she might play it. It might even sneak by on its own, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't I she wouldn't want to be taking this one up top, which she's looking at now. Yeah, I think she just feels like she wants to get rid of it. Mm. Yeah, you can sense it, can't you? I want to get rid of that one. But it's actually the yellow on the right hand side that's causing the problem. Yeah, I, I like this route though, yeah. but it's imperative she lands with a good angle on the last yellow. She'll be aiming to pot it up into the top right-hand pocket and ideally be pretty straight, you feel. I'm just looking at that one on the right-hand side and it's just not nice, is it? It's not nice to get on. She's, she's going to have to play a shot here. I mean, stun with right-hand side off two cushions. No? Mm, I think Round I'd off the side cushion and the and the top cushion yeah, and come round maybe, like that? Maybe, maybe, but I think the You looked at me very on, Dan. You just yeah. didn't like it. You looked at me as if the shot wasn't on. It I was is I'm on. pretty sure it's on. It is on. But well, it's just a lot of traffic. Yeah, oh. just like that. But if she played that with a lot more right hand side, it would have accelerated off the first cushion yeah. and just come round and left herself a nicer angle. Because if we're looking now, this looks like this cue ball might be. Heading towards the centre pocket, it naturally. Certainly looks like it. She wanted to be straighter on it. She had to roll this very slowly. Brilliant effort. Is it going to squeeze? No, not quite. So go on, you're going back. What shot would you have played to get on? I round off the screwed yellow? up. You did have screwed on and off between, one cushion yeah, in between. between. Yeah, I, I, I just didn't like that option because it was bringing the traffic into play. There's yeah. a risk for snooker. The shot I suggested, not that I'm no, no. obviously over yourself was um, avoiding any such chance. Would have been unlucky to have not left a shot. I think the pop becomes harder though, doesn't it? Absolutely. As soon as you play them aside, yeah. you've got to sort of aim to miss, haven't you? And how hard you have to hit it. Yeah, hit it with that. it's just a judgment shot. It's a complete touch shot. But I never missed them. No, I, I like, never you missed know. anything from exactly. That's why I'm in here and not out there. Oh, I don't know. We'll be seeing you a little bit later on. Are you last game? Last game, yeah. Last game. Headlining, as per usual, as the number one should be. Disagree. Agree? I disagree. <laughs> Now this charge goes one clear, three two up. Possibility of the match clock coming into play, possibly. As the players having a little bit of a chat. Always played in good spirits. Yeah, I haven't seen one fallout since I've been here. 
No. Neither the seniors or the ladies, no. no. It's great. It's, it's out, out of all the events, it's the one I look forward to the most because of the atmosphere. Yeah. I don't know, we always bring some nice atmosphere, don't we? Wherever we go. In here. Absolutely. Everywhere. Yeah. Never stop talking in or out of this commentary box. Yeah. So we can confirm that both players are now through to tomorrow in the in the winners section. Must have finished five nil, did five it? Five nil. Well I I do know Nicky Oates and what a fantastic result that is. Superb. And actually Nicky finishes third instead of fourth, so she'll play a, a fourth seed tomorrow. Somebody asked me that question yesterday and I just answered it as yes as if I knew but I didn't but it would make perfect sense that they do do it that way even in the plate. It's all done as fair as possible over at Ultimate Pool. And that's good to try to a little bit of confidence. She can actually, she's actually perfect so she can play this one into the middle and then she kind of demonstrated where she wants to leave the white bill now and that will leave her an angle to go up the table. I just hope that the 15 second shot clock which is going to come into play mid visit doesn't catch her out. We see it so often when somebody's in the middle of a visit now you can just hear the, mm. the klaxon would you call it? Yeah and it's good now for her to be taking the time initially before that 15 seconds comes into effect and she still has her, uh, has her extension which is crucial and she, she can actually see the bottom of this white ball or the cue ball that's confident cueing that when yeah. you're cueing so close to a red you've got to have confidence in your cue action a little bit tricky this shot might be forced to play a kiss into the Ella or screw off the side cushion yeah, here yeah screw off the side cushion I think but she's a bit short a little bit can't avoid the cannon on the red so surely here you're just playing this quite slowly and leaving yourself a shot on the eight. I'd be playing top and then flicking Trying to the flick red. on and off. Yeah. That's off. okay. That's probably about as good as she could have hoped for. Yeah, yeah, superb. Does the left hand pocket play large here? No, she's playing top. Kiss off the Oh, she played it very slowly. I tell you what, she knit. But if she got it, she wouldn't have potted a white. That I know, yeah, I can see that. But he was very close on both balls there. It was a great effort. And there's not really a safety here. Up the top. Yeah, I just, I, I didn't like it. No, I don't like it either. I didn't. She can actually see this full yeah, ball. She can see this full ball. And even if she couldn't, she'd have a lot of margin for off the side cushion. So Sarah touch it. With only eight minutes remaining, it's four frames to two up. Kerry Griffith's going to have it all to do. Obviously, the result now is, uh, it doesn't matter, but these girls do not know that. It's immaterial, that's the word I was looking for. 5-3 five, five, is, is the golden result that Trudge needs, or better. So 5-2, she finishes top. Ah, OK, yeah, so it come into play to decide places. So 5-2, she finished, what about four, as things stand, 5-2, she finished top. Yeah, if, she, if, if, if the next frame took eight minutes as well, she's, she finishes top. So I'm so glad you're here, you know, so I don't have to do the maths. You must have known the password to the laptop. No comment. Can't wait to see that break again because I'm a little bit confused as to what happened there. The cue ball sort of Bounce. came backwards yeah. and then went into the side cushion, I feel. Yeah, yeah so it so sort of arced, yeah, didn't so it? Didn't, she didn't hit it actually that well. And it's the first time she's not potted a ball. Mm. Oh, look at these reds. Yeah, that was a bit loose from Kerry Griffiths. Not what we've come to expect from her. Like a zigzag. Nice when they're like this. Yeah, this is like a practice setup, isn't it? Doesn't want it. Wants that red to stop, and I think it's okay.
Well, I was about to say, she's only going to have one shot to play and that'll be transitioning down the table. But the way she's played that red into the other one and moved it towards the bottom left-hand pocket will help her. She is running through these, accelerating through the gears. Sarah Trudget here wants to close this match out here and now. So one, one more tricky shot to play here because she wants to become uh, go through the uh, red and yellow. Oh, she's just going to take a punishment. Play this confidently, and you're over the line. She really is sort of confidence personified here isn't she you know and that can be quite intimidating to the inexperienced Absolutely. it's not the case with Kerry Griffiths obviously both of these players will see themselves in the main event tomorrow morning Sarah will be in first place though Harriet Haynes best of luck in your match later on I think we'll be having a little interview with Sarah our winner just in a couple of minutes We'll be right back. Well, welcome back down to the Ultimate Pool Arena here in Daventry for the mini series. We've just seen a lovely win for Sarah Trudgett. Sarah, congratulations. Thank you. you went into that match under pressure. You needed to win it to make it into the main event tomorrow. You've done that, and actually, you topped the group on frame difference as well. How pleased are you? Very happy with that. Yeah, you, you're happy with the way you played from 2-2. Two, two, it looked like you found a gear and suddenly ran, ran through some frames. Yeah, I, I'd, I'm struggling on these tables. I'm not going to lie, I don't play on them a lot and they do run differently but it's the game and we're both on the same table it's not an excuse it's just it takes me a little while to get used to yeah. the reaction of the ball and whatnot and yeah. well, once I found it I was all right more the table than the arena and the, the shot clock because you play so quick anyway I mean yeah. the 15 seconds a shot I guess doesn't really come too too much of a struggle for you because you fly around the table yeah I always have one if I'm playing okay and I'm just playing naturally it's yeah. a quick game but sometimes I do struggle obviously and need a need to have a little look around but it doesn't usually take me that long to find out what I'm gonna do how much are you enjoying the uh, the mini series and, and the women's series as well playing against some of these women yeah it's it's nice to play women who I don't mean to be disrespectful but can play the game yeah it's been I've played for a lot of years and for a long time there was a lot of ladies that tried to play the game no disrespect but 
there's a lot more these days that can do what they want to do with the white ball and, and it's becoming very competitive out there yes, as well isn't it yes, it's really entertaining to watch as well which we absolutely love uh, congratulations we'll see you in the main event tomorrow um, fantastic stuff okay let's get on with our second match join us again in a couple of minutes thank you that's brilliant
Well, a very warm welcome back to Daventry. Second match of the evening session here. Mika Rooney taking on Sharon Lunn. This is a massive match in Group 12. It really is. All, uh, all ladies have played two matches. Lucy Smith has two wins from two. She tops the group on four points. Sharon Lunn has a win and a loss. She's on two points. Mika Rooney has a win and a loss. She's on two points. And Chloe Smith has zero points points two losses from her two matches it essentially means this is effectively a knockout match winner will make it through to the main event the loser will go into the plate event makes sense delighted to say joining me on commentary for this match is somebody that we'll be seeing later on on the stream Chloe Payne thank you for joining us you'll be going in we were actually just talking off air that you've got your match against Emma Cunningham later on tonight and it's yeah. a big one for, for both of you but more for you because if you get a win you'll tie her and potentially it could come down frame difference or depending on the results on the other side of the, the draw yeah so yeah I do need to win to have a good chance of getting through really yeah I guess it uh, it just clears the mind go out there win the fact that you're playing someone like Emma doesn't matter. You're out there and take care of your side of the business. You focus on the table, not the player. Absolutely. OK, well, we're about to get underway here. 40 minutes on the match clock, race to five frames. And it is Sharon Lunn that is going to get us underway. And not the best of starts for us. A great opportunity immediately here for Mika Rooney to yes, get going. Close. It's going to pull up though. Mika's a great player. She's achieved some great things in her career, former world champion, but not got off to the greatest of starts this weekend. But she can take care of business today by taking down this match. out too well for that one on the right hand side is a real problem now might be better to pull back and slow down here because not a massive numbers disadvantage reds aren't particularly good either but I think she's gearing up to keep going go for the clearance miss it and then freed there up looks okay she drops that one in it looked like it was going to stay on the table for a second but if she's absolutely straight on this double then she's actually in really good shape Shot. Double goes in. I think she's on the yellow, but if not, she could play cushion first. But I think she's on it clean. Just has to get the cue ball out. Could easily finish behind that red. Just needs to run it through a little bit of top. And yeah, played the cushion first shot and <coughs> snookers herself on the eight ball. All that hard work could be down the drain if she doesn't come up with a big shot here it's now wide open that's what you said a minute ago Chloe you go for that finish and get Lisa, deep all there's on looking at the three cushion here big window for it it's just picking that right angle
great that's effort. A good attempt. It really was some effort to make that eight ball. One thing hitting it, but it was trying to make it. Part of the reason you go the, the three cushions, trying to get the angle so you're pop knocking it towards the pocket potentially. But now it stayed on the table. Sharon Lumber with an opportunity to counter clear. It's just tied them two up together. So the left one of the two might go top left. If not, she's got the left centre. The right one of those two might go bottom right corner. Well. Yeah, just do a little bit of a grimace, not a huge amount of positivity out there because still you'd say good, good enough shape here, natural to just get the cue ball back to the middle of the table. Oh, it rattled but it dropped. Used it all as they say. is the straight pot to the corner. <coughs> oh, big disappointment for both players in this frame, but if Mika Rooney can knock this eight ball in, but she won't take for granted. She can, one nil up. And one nil it is. Mika Rooney needed two opportunities. Looked like she was going to make that reverse clearance, but snooker herself on the eight ball got that second opportunity and goes one nil ahead I think it's having a solid season without really threatening I would say this year currently sitting seventh in the women's series rankings qualified through events one and three in the main event but, uh, came up short in the plate event on event so I had to go into the plate event on event two and went deep in the plate event a bit of a hot and cold season for her, but the CV tells all there. 2018 world champion, 2019 All-Ireland champion. Two absolute major, major titles there. And a current Northern Ireland champion as well. And you have to say, there is a serious amount of strength and depth in Northern Ireland. And certainly in the women's pool. So it's a great title to hold. break gonna make a ball that was a chance pretty good you'd fancy these Chloe I imagine these have opened up quite well yeah they have split nice and I'm just trying to see what I'll go for yeah you've got to go yellows really every yellow has a home do you ever watch the the players out there if you're trying to Kind of make your way in the game, kind of watch and try and see if there's anything you can pick up from different players. Yeah, I've been chilling this weekend really, but I do usually watch the women's game a lot, or quite a lot. Obviously, I'm on the tour next year. Yeah, you must be excited to get out there and yeah, I can't wait. Full full season on the tour. Obviously, it's great to play in these mini series, but non-ranked events and don't count towards your women's series ranking. And obviously, hard tour to get onto, but you're signed up for 2023. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. One more event to come from the Women's Series this year. In a couple of weeks' time, we'll all be up in Blackpool. You're hoping for a, a bit of illness somewhere, maybe a way of sneaking in the back door on that draw? No, uh, I can't, unfortunately. My dad's in a Challenger event, so... Oh, you can't, can't get there as well, then? I'm dog sitter. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, Mika's 
just over hit this one. Might have to be a complete reroute here. If there was a spot come available, I would try and go though. It's not often I turn down a spot for pool. <laughs> <laughs> Love the game. She's okay here. She'd love to just bring the cue ball back and try and get somewhere near the centre of the table, which doesn't necessarily need to. Just sort of, yeah, just you can, with a pocket like that, with a ball that close to pocket, you can really manipulate where you pot it. And she could have, if she wanted to, come back up the right-hand side past the eight ball that way rather than coming across the face of it, which for me would have helped her. She could have run off the top cushion, couldn't she? Yeah, top. potentially. I made that mistake in one of my matches yesterday. So it's now cushion first, but path of the cue ball once she, if she makes it, is key as well. And she's going to catch it a little bit too thick. So for the second time in two frames, hands the table over to Sharon Lum with a pretty good opportunity for a counter clearance. Sharon did not make the most of it in the previous frame. Yeah, I definitely fancy these there. really natural connections between these. Just sort of got to hold yourself together and mind your work. that one similar story to frame one when Sharon had the opportunity for that counter clearance just lost her way a little bit at the back end oh, Mickey just allowing that to run a little bit loose but the good news is for her she's got plenty of angle here focus on the pot Pace control the cue ball, doesn't have to do anything fancy. Struggling to settle on the shot. close to her work but that little flick off really the eight ball stuck on it. yeah that little flick just gives her more of a chance I think she's going long and in it goes Mika Rooney 2 nil pop. ahead <laughs> Sharon's going to be really disappointed twice she's had opportunities to counter clear she, she could sit there and feel like she could be 2 nil up herself you just got to put that out your head when you're out there playing you can't think about your past games That's Mika Rooney's profile again. We've already seen that. We know that Mika's the former world champion. Sharon's not quite going as well on the women's series as Mika this year, but she's she's going solid. Currently 15th in the rankings. Twice been to the quarterfinals of the world championships and the final of the national ladies. Part of the world team championships. Team winners multiple times around a long time. As Sharon, as I said, currently 15th in the rankings during the women's series. She's always qualified through to the main event. And that is certainly under threat here in the mini series, though. A reminder that this is essentially 
a knockout game, as in the winner will go into the main event tomorrow, the loser will go into the pl plate event. Both players could finish top of the group as well, although it, it seems very unlikely as Lucy Smith has a very healthy frame difference advantage and is currently in action as well. If she wins her final match, she'll be guaranteed with three wins from three. If she loses it, then it does open the door, but that just changes where you go into the main event, as in different seedings. In theory, you get better draws going through as a, as a winner. When you've missed two counter clearances when the table's wide open, this is not that inviting a finish. I mean, they all go, they all sort of have a pocket, but they're a little bit fiddly to connect up. And when you've missed it... Just getting that right position on the shot. Yeah, and when and you've missed... You've I'm sorry. When you fall short, it's hard to get back to where you want to be, isn't it? Yeah. And that's made things worse. It's knocked the eight ball into an unpotable position. And Hasn't landed on the next ball. I only assume she was trying to catch the eight ball a little bit thinner and just didn't get great contact on it. Yeah, get maybe get the cue ball more middle of the table than right hand side. There's lots of other groups going on around the arena right now. All the ladies tonight will be playing their final group games before the serious business of the knockouts tomorrow. And if you want to keep an eye on any of the scores, make sure you go and check out ultimatepoolgroup.com or ultimatepool.tv. Just got lucky there, not putting the white. Yeah, just looking through some of the other scores. And Becky Watkins, who I know, know that you know well, she we saw her on the stream yesterday losing out to Harriet Haynes in a bit of a classic match, five frames to four. She is currently one that up on Lynn Pinches. She needs to win that to guarantee herself in the winner's side that's essentially the same situation as we have here that is a pretty much winner takes all scenario we will see Harriet Haynes later on tonight she's the last match here on the main TV table taking on Cheryl Dickinson was trying to make that or do you think that was just a, an out and out safety I think it was a safety because yeah. where she left the white doesn't look like she was on for much the only reason I sort of question it is that it's not a great choice of safety no because now she can come off that yellow thin play the loss of turn shot put the red and keep behind the yellow which I think is what Sharon will be going for here yeah. Oh, well, while well, Mika works out what she needs to do, let's up update you on your group, Chloe. You're kind of, you know, you know that if you win, you're potentially in good shape, but you do are reliant on the other game as well. And it's currently one nil, Jane Mitchell over Dawn Keeling. If Jane wins that match, you could end up in a frame difference situation if you weren't to win. Yeah, it will be going off frame difference. Of course, if Dawn Keeling wins, then you'll be going, and you win, then you'll be going on frame difference with you, Dawn and Emma at the end of the night as well. So a lot to play for in your group. It's one of the tightest ones to call. Not trying to put the pressure on you or anything. No pressure. Pressure's for tyres. Love that. <laughs> I just play thin off this shallow and leave it behind. Yeah, just like that. That's a great shot there from Shavon. Yeah, very well executed. Easiest red on the table for Mika to hit is the one by the eight ball, but she won't want to hit that one. Yeah, you can see her working out and trying to work out another option. And it's worth it even if she fails because 
with keyboard in hand, you're still asking Sharon to play a shot, whereas if you go for the red and get out of it, if knock the eight ball on, then... You won't be leaving the eight Essentially ball on. Right? Yeah, exactly. I think that's why she isn't going for it. That's a good hit there from Mika. It is a good hit, but has left a very comfortable two yellows here for Sharon. But because she avoided doing anything with the eight ball, it's actually not that good an opportunity. <laughs> And if you think if she's going to go for these, if she was to go for the yellows and freed the black and then left and didn't pop the yellow, she's going to leave the black ball open for <coughs> Mika. Yeah, the problem I think she's got is that just turning the table over to Mika, Mika can now put in a, a very good safety shot. And certainly for Mika, if she ever does get an opportunity to pot, and she could from here, she could go aggressively if she wanted to, it's not difficult for her to open up the eight ball. Much more controllable to do. I feel maybe Sharon could have taken on something aggressive there, even if it was low percentage, because you know, look where Mika's left this cue ball now. She can pop the one into the right centre and just flick off the eight ball without doing much damage at all. Should open up the red and the eight ball and still be on a choice of two. One more good pot. Didn't see that coming. No, neither did I. Thought she would uh, knock that one in, make it 3 0. So Sharon gets let off. An opportunity now that she needs to take. straight here might just have to accept what she's got yeah very tough eight ball yep nice straight pop there yeah excellent the pressure was starting to build she'll feel like if she didn't make that eight ball three nil and of course remember she needs to win this match it's essentially a knockout and that's uh, an excellent pot under the circumstances for Sharon Lunt. Gets herself on the board. And that should settle her into this match. Let's have a look at some of the more, some more of the scores. There's also some seniors action going on as well. And all, all that's uh, on ultimate4.tv. You can go check out all the scores there as well. Let's have a look. Well, one of the big favourites for the competition, Amy Beecham. She has safely progressed through. Three out of three for her. And Maddie Wilkinson will be joining her as well. Two wins for Maddie. That group is settled. Also settled in Group 3, Frankie Rogers and Jodie Holt, both with two wins from two matches. But because of the way that Sammy Rowler and Katie World of Spin have gone, they are through, even though they're now playing each other. But their match is just for who comes first and second in that group. Look quite involved. 
light in here. As long as that one goes by near the yellow. Yeah, they do, don't they? I think one sort of area to get to. Fresh off that fr previous win, is that going to spur on to a first visit finish here? <coughs> oh, how'd you hit that gap? That's not what she wanted. Contact on either yellow, I think she'd have been happy, but yeah. probably the one on the right would have given a perfect position. Somehow got to get back there now to free up that red. First time we keep a bit of an eye on the match clock here. It is a race to five frames, and when Mika went 2-0 up and looked good for 3-0, didn't think the match clock was really going to come into play, but we're into the second half now. We started with 40 minutes, down to 19, and only 2-1 on the scoreline. So I think the match clock could have a say here. So that's just another element for the ladies out there to factor in. Oh, hello. Red's going to go in. No, oh, it sits on the jaw. Nearly a three ball. Point. Yeah. I don't think she'll be too disappointed. Obviously, if it goes in, she's got a good chance to win the frame, but she's got control in the frame, which is what she was hoping to do. Shot there to get that yellow out. I have a little bit more work to do though here. Yeah, one really dead yellow, isn't there, on the left hand side? She gets some of the yellows free, does it double? Difficult to say. She leaves the right angle on the other side of the table. Oh, that's a great shot there. Probably wouldn't have done, which is why she's broken it out. Well, I said that it was a tricky chance when she came to the table, it certainly isn't now. Excellent opening cup of the pots. Now it's sort of hold yourself together and make the finish. Everything goes. Just misses the yellow. Amazing, isn't it? Two shots before were excellent. That one, very disappointing. Not left Sharon with an easy pot though. She has a cut. Good shot there from Sharon. Does the red... Is that by the black? Yeah, does it pass the eight ball? I thought she might take the one in the bottom left-hand corner and, and go up the table. Ah, oh, the fact this... Yeah, yeah the fact this goes is... Yeah. <coughs> Not... Well, it did go. I was about to say the plant... Leaving a plant to play on the ball you're playing is never ideal, but from the way she would have been playing it, it would have been fine. But we're not going to find out because simple pot missed for Sharon. for an extra 15 seconds just trying to work out what to do here there is a chance to counter clear but eight ball awkward and obviously the one yellow on the right hand side very awkward I think the plan was to play on the double but I didn't come back too far I think she can still make it though 
Yeah, sure. Brilliant, straightens it up. A little bit of screw on the cue ball. Left yourself a little bit hampered over that red, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. Well, it looks trickier from the overhead than it did from the main camera. That's very good. Okay, it's a thin clip along the top cushion now, which she wants to leave lots of angle on the final yellow to the top right. Just so she can get it behind the black. She's missed the cut. Isn't the easiest of shots. Sharon now has a very good chance to even it up to 2 2. Yeah, I didn't think we'd be saying that when Mika had a great chance for 3 0. Even 3-1. Yep, I think she's just got the right angle there for that red onto get yeah, onto the black. Got quite a few pockets that she can go for the black in here. Just chooses to play for the middle. She's missed the black to go 2-2. Two, two. Oh, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. That could be the difference between winning the match and losing the match. Difference between qualifying through to the main event and the plate event. Yeah. That's, I mean, Mika will be starting to feel the pressure building on her because she knows she should have been 3-0. She knows she should have been 3-1. And, well, it was for all money 2-2 two, two there. Sharon's going to be kicking herself for missing that black. And it is 3-1 to Mika Rooney, two frames away now from making it through to the main event tomorrow. Very disappointing for Sharon Lund. And this is our second match of the evening session. We have got plenty on the way. Some really good matches to come. Ella Machado taking on Kirsty Lee Davis, former world champion there. She'll be a good favourite for that match. And then Vicky Lomax, who has looked very good over the last two or three years. I think this is going to be a good match, Vicky Lomax and Holly can. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to that one. And of course, yourself, Chloe, taking on Emma Cunningham. Emma, four times a world champion. Won everything there is to get with, won everything there is to win in the game multiple times. She is the only ultimate pool professional from the women's series, although Harriet Haynes will be in our final match of the night, has every opportunity of joining her next year. It will be Harriet or Amy Beecham that will do that. They're the numbers one and two this year. The number one will become an Ultimate Ball Pro for 2023. And Harriet rounds out our night, taking on Cheryl Dickinson. Good contact on the break. Oh, well, it's just been left a bit awkward. It was a good break. Slightly unlucky where that white girl has been left. She makes this a good chance of three two. Just misses the pot. So now Mika has the chance. Extension called.
Well, that's messed things up. Eight ball going in amongst them as well. Yeah, she didn't quite want that there. We are about to go into the 15 seconds. A strop part of the match, which is going to make things even trickier out there for these ladies. And that makes it even messier once again. What is it like as a, a player out there, Chloe, when it is 15 seconds a shot and you feel like the beeps are going down yeah. every single time you... I enjoy it. Yeah? Yeah, I feel like I thrive on the stream because I just feel like I want to show people what I can do. Is the 15 seconds as tough as I try to make out from the commentary box? Um, for some people, for some people, yeah. Some people find it tricky. Some people find it a lot trickier than others. Depends if you're a quick player around the table or not. Oh, it's unlucky. Yeah, clever. Trying to play off the reds, but just got a little bit too much of them. Had to get a bit more into the cushion. It's nearly a great shot. <coughs> If I'm Mika in this situation, I'm happy enough for Sharon to sort of chase finishes from this situation. I at three one up now you're in the fifteen seconds of shot. It's almost sort of Yeah. It's a long way to, to go in terms of playing the clock down. And I'm not saying run the clock down, but don't chase a bad finish yourself. If Mika gets this frame you'll think that Sharon is running a bit close to time. Could even be a potential 6 one shootout if... Yeah, if Sharon was to win this four frame, four. It, it would, yeah, it would certainly, certainly be on the cards. Has there been a 6 one shootout yet this weekend? Yeah, we've had a few. I uh, think there's been three, maybe four. Any on the women's series? We had one, yeah. I uh, tested my memory, that was last night. Um, I can't remember who won it now. Uh, it'll come to me. Bear with me. Been a long weekend. <laughs> I'm really on. So let's say we're only day on day two. two. <laughs> on day two. Red out the way near the black. And it does go in the top right corner. Alicia Dodd. There you go. I knew it would come to me. Not not that I have a laptop in front of me with, with notes. <laughs> Alicia Dodd got over the line in the sixth red shootout 4-3. Uh, in the end, uh, over Joe Hobdate. Shots coming out has left Sharon Lund a great chance here. Yeah, you'd think she should really take the frame. Yeah, play the plant, play the cannon. Oh, it's just gone slightly awkward on the left hand side. I think she can play the one to the bottom left now and uh, play into the yellow, and that would open everything up. Yeah, I think I'd go that way. She could go. Where, where she's going and leave the angle to go top right on it. Yeah, I don't mind this so much, other than the fact that... She just needs to flick the yellow out of the way and leave it on the red. I think that'll do. I think it just goes. Just tight. Sure. Yeah, not easy for Mika in response here, but she'll be happy to get to the table. She can lay an easy enough snooker, but with the red being right over the pocket, 
That's an easy escape. Yeah, there'll be a chance for Sharon, in fact, Romney, because not even going to get the snooker, so a chance for Sharon. Does still have to play a good positional shot to get on the eight ball. It doesn't go to its natural pocket. And from here, it's not easy to get onto it in any other pocket. run a little bit well controlled shot though you have to say yeah, pick, pick the line was great okay one. it's gone gone a roll too far for perfect but still she had taken this before she hit it it's a comfortable enough eight ball still oh but she misses it just there's been two or three times in this match where Sharon Lunn has just had an opportunity to kill a frame and just let a shot come in yep. if that was a, a red halfway through the frame she's not missing it because it's the frame ball just allowed it to it feels like it's just getting a bit of pressure yeah Three pressure one down that's exactly what it is that's a nice screw back there from Mika don't think we'll be seeing a six foot shoot out if Mika gets this frame Thin. Not left an easy pot for Sharon, but there is a pot there. Oh, it's that not going to drop. So unlucky. And does Mika have a, an opportunity to get behind this yellow? Yes, she does. One good She's positional got shot. A really nice angle to drop in behind this yellow. Control. This will yep. be a dagger to Sharon Lunt. Lovely shot. And 4 1 it is with four minutes left on the clock. It's a really tall order now for Sharon Lunt to get back into this match. She needs three straight frames in four minutes to try and get back into it. There's no golden breaks in play today, so it's going to be very tough for her. You feel like that is the defining moment in Need this match. Need a break dish, break reverse dish, and then clearance quick. Yeah, and it all have to, has to happen ultra quick as well. So it does look like it's going to be Mika Rooney going through to the main event tomorrow. Fantastic event here because it's set up in such a way that everybody's going through to a knockout tournament tomorrow it's just a case of which tournament you're trying to get yourself into so if Sharon is to lose this one she has to dust herself down and just say okay opportunity to go ahead and win that plate event there's still silverware on offer there's still prize money on offer may not be the major prize you're looking for but still opportunities out there also worth pointing out if you are watching us here on YouTube then we have one more match coming up for you this evening before we go solely on to the Ultimate Pool app, which you can watch on the website or on the app. And if you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you use the Black Friday code, Black Friday 10, get your discount. Well, Mika doesn't need to worry, but she looks like she's... Fancies the job of getting to five here. She can just let the clock run down if she wants to. But there is a good chance of a finish on. Yeah, the reds do look very pretty here. I'd fancy them. I think she might be okay here. I think there's a gap to the one to the right centre. Like it is. Might be able to just drop into this red. 
Yeah, also going to say, I don't think she's going to get particularly close to the eight ball, but just give yourself a shot at it. <coughs> oh, she's missed a word. So two minutes 24 for Sharon Lund to make, well, three finishes required. Doesn't particularly look possible, does it? No. Doesn't look very inviting. But so. I guess if you are going to make a comeback, it's got to start somewhere. It probably needs to be about 30 second clearance here. Yeah, she should be moving now. <laughs> But this is one of the big things in the mini series is, is giving all the women an opportunity to experience this. Playing in a match clock situation will be very new for Sharon Nunn. Yep. It's quite weird from playing matches where you're playing and you don't have a time limit and then you go on stream and you're like, oh, I only have 40 minutes to play. Yeah, it completely changes how you go about certain finishes as well, or how you go about certain situations. Yeah. Whether you want to be ultra-aggressive or not. I was saying in the previous frame for Mika not to take a tough finish on. If she was playing a straight race, she might have been tempted with. But when you get low on time, you don't really want to put her in snookers to potentially win that frame. Yeah, you've got to manage that clock. Mika doesn't need to worry about it. 4-1 up now with only a minute and James left guaranteed the victory here but she wants to get to five get it done the old-fashioned way if you like yeah. a tricky eight ball to do it okay it's shot hasn't really got a worry about the white going anywhere it's going into the yellows Love and in shot. it goes the yellow does not matter she still gets the win Five frames to one. Sharon Nunn had her opportunities, but it is Mika Rooney that comes through the pressure match to book her place in the main event tomorrow. Chloe, thank you for joining us on commentary. Sorry, we'll you see you out there in the arena later on tonight, taking on Emma Cunningham. And next up for us, it will be Ilda Machado taking on former world champion Kirsty Lee Davis. Join us again in a couple of minutes.
I don't know the names. You don't know the names. Good evening, a very warm welcome to Group 11 match between Kirsty Lee Davies and Ilda Machado. This is a top of the table clash. It is basically here to do one thing, decide positions of who will go through in first and who will go through in second. This will be our last match on YouTube. We will then be live on the Ultimate Pool app. For those of you that haven't downloaded it, please do so. There is a plethora of footage and coverage on there, and there'll be 500 hours next year live. Then we have a little bit of an offer still going this weekend. If you put in the promotion code BF10, you will receive £10 off a yearly dis subscription. I am joined in commentary by one of our top female players, somebody who looks in very fine fettle this weekend, surely a contender, Amy Beecham. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Very, very well. I think we're just going to be uh, changing them graphics behind yeah. the players. And then we should be ready to get underway. Kirsty Lee Davies, of course. We will see her bio shortly, but two-time world champion. First one a long time ago, I believe, Amy. Yeah, I think I think she's still the youngest ever black ball world champion. And how old was she? I've got no idea. We could work out her age then, Absolutely couldn't we? Absolutely no idea. Because I think it was 2009. Yeah, I think probably around about 17, 17 18. And she's one of the players that have won a world championships at two different rule sets yeah which is quite a feat really because back then the tactics and to the game were very very different between the two rule sets yeah and now she's playing a third one the only one yeah i would say yeah i think these, these rules are definitely suit kirsty she's very aggressive um as i think anyone with a black ball background is compared to a world rules background um but yeah i think i think these rules will suit her <coughs> Are we going to see a very attacking match due to both players already through to the main event tomorrow, do you think? I'd have thought so, yeah. I think Kirsty's aggressive anyway. I don't know much about Ilda. Um, so yeah, it's probably a nice kind of match for Ilda to get some experience out on the TV table with no pressure on in terms of already being through to tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> she's already through to tomorrow. And this will give her invaluable experience because you can just see her there, Amy. She's looking like she's feeling it a little bit, it has to be said, breathing quite heavily. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot to take in. There's plenty of people watching. Nilda has won the lag and will get us underway. First look at her break. Controlled the cue ball okay. Send it over to the side cushion, but it wasn't the quite the power she would have liked no not the best of contacts you can just see the hand come off yeah. the table a little bit early you'd like to see that just stay still really Kirsty always looks confident losing semi-final in the last mini-series yeah, I think she lost a lost a grip, didn't she? Lost a Kerry. I was trying to figure it out before yeah, I got I asked the same question because with the other losing semi finalist was I think it was Danielle Randall. Right. Okay. They were the two losing semi finalists. Yeah. And I couldn't remember which way round it was. I just remember that Kerry's performance in the semi final was super. She played really well, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Which emphasis do you put on finishing first in the group? Are you are you bothered or do you really want to finish first? Yeah, you're always bothered because you just you, know, you just want to win every match. For me, you know, you don't want to go in thinking, oh, it's all right because I've I've still qualified. You want to win. You just want to keep winning. Seems to be a trend. My last co-commentator was Harriet, and she was exactly the same as you. Yeah, Amy. you just want to win matches. That's what you came here to do. It's a good shot from Kirst to get that ball back out. 
don't know if it's sat on that red though, if you can see the one in the middle or not. I think she's okay there. Oh, I don't know. No, it's very difficult to tell, isn't it? I think that's tight to that red, it? isn't it? I think she's... Okay, she's on it. She's playing it, I think, so. Playing it with the right-hand side. Yeah. This is okay. I think. Overhit that slightly, I think. Has she got a shot available? Does this yellow pass up into the top left, possibly? She's just having a little look. If it does, that's what she'll opt for. She can direct that cue ball into the eight and the yellow. I think the pot's there. It's a magnificent pot, but the positional side of things have just has just gone a little bit array. Yeah, just got into the white a bit too much. Do you remember Kirsty's just coming back into the game and she did say at the first event it was positional positional play she was struggling with more than anything struggling with position and still reached a semi-final yeah, not a exactly, bad achievement exactly. <coughs> would love to just play this one cushion but the red's in the way an awful lot of side needed here to get the potting angle has she had two kisses and drop it in not quite very very close I think she'll be happy though where that's finished. I know it's not always a good thing in these rules to have a ball over the bag, but she's not left a, you know, even a safety shot from here is difficult for Hilda. Yeah, two kisses on the yellow, nearly sent it into the pocket. Chance, but a lot of pressure on this opening pot. That's a great first pot. Oh, that will give her some great confidence. Still not easy. Yes, every red does have a pocket. Yeah chance to settle any early nerves for Ilda. Ilda only narrowly losing out yesterday to Sophie Gibbs Nichols by five frames to four. She then went on to complete a whitewash against Donna Wyatt, five frames to nil. Okay. This being her last game. Yeah, that's a good result. I mean, Donna's a very good player, so that's a, a decent result. And, and Sophie's obviously an England player. Very, very solid. By contrast, Kirsty Lee Davis won her first match against Donna. By five frames to one, and then beat Sophie Gibbs Nichols by five frames to three. Yeah. So sort of similar results, you have to say. Yeah. It's close. As we see the miss, and surely Kirsty will not take these two rem two remaining balls out and open the scoring up. What pocket was play to the black in here? I would probably play short side on the black from yeah, here. I'd be similar, because if you if you under hit it, you got a shot in the corner also. Please don't carry on asking me questions. <laughs> no, I'm going you. to. It's you fun. are the it's expert. Fun. Yeah, I don't know about that. You're pretty good. Modest, I'm picking up. So cue this well, and you one nil up. Yeah. And she has one. done. Always looks quite confident, Kirsty. Yeah, very much so. Comes across that way in person as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, not especially when you've got the ability to to back it up. Oh, much looks fed up. There we go. We did say 2009 Black Ball World Champion, five-year gap, and then came back and won. The the World Championship on the World Rules side of things, as well as the European Champion. <coughs> and then had another break, and quite a long break, I believe. You probably know a little bit more than me, possibly. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a good few years. I, I, I don't know the exact amount, because she did come up and live in Knott's for a while, um, and then moved back, moved back to Wales, so it's probably been four or five years now. I, I, I don't know the exact amount. The exact date. Interestingly, 
there on that biome we didn't touch upon it was the tip size 7.5 mil that is very much on the small side of things yeah she does like to move the white around um confident when she's playing well very confident with the white and putting side on um yeah i think that's what she's always played with how big is your tip amy Eight something, I think. Eight something. Somewhere between eight and nine. I don't Not exactly too know. No. Has the no. queue ever been altered? No. So it's probably eight and a half, you would have thought. But you don't know, do you? It doesn't really matter. Seems to do the trick. As long as it feels all right. That's yeah. I know I'm not really into um, sort of technical and Seems to have won one or two. One yeah, or two I've comps done with all, it. I've done all right, yeah. yeah. The modesty continues here at Ultimate Pool. The plant next. Yeah. Can she get 100%. the eight ball out as well? Can she disturb that eight ball? Yeah, I think if you wanted to, you could. Um, whether it goes in the corner already, though. Certainly tried to. Yeah, I think it goes in the corner, so I think that's fine. Just give you a bit more room to move the the, um, the yellow out of the way. The issue now is how you get on a next ball from the one the bottom right that's, that's gone slightly on the right. Eight ball now passes into two bags clearly, two pockets clearly, I should say. Yeah. Sometimes you sorry. Sometimes you can't get away from the slang of your local town. No, absolutely not. Just went for dropping that in, but it's hung over the bag. Not left much of a shot for Rilda here. A tough cutback, she feels, is her best option. Very good. Two, one. Two for the price of one. And she's actually landed nicely on the one next to the eight ball. The one obvious problem, obviously, with this finish is the one she's closest to now. Don't think she's got an angle to move it. No, she's very, very straight. Does this yellow pass the red? I don't think so. No, I think she's got to go up table now and try and cut the one in. Um. This? I thought maybe she'd look at the cock out of three cushions. This is very thin. And she hasn't covered the pocket there, Amy. So yeah. the table very open for Kirsty to double her lead. Yeah, I'd expect Kirsty to get these from here. She'll expect herself to, to get these. <coughs> All are very comfortable at the moment for Kirsty. Obviously, having already qualified, she is going to be f not feeling the pressure as if it was a quarter or semi final match. <coughs> Looking to draw the cue ball right back where her hand is here. Oh, she's okay. Keeping it simple for position on the eight. Right. Two nil, a very confident strike. Ten minutes gone it so far. Just a reminder once again, this will be our last match if you are watching with us on YouTube. If you'd like to continue watching throughout this weekend, we have the seniors event as well as the ladies event, which will continue into tonight and all day tomorrow ultimate pool tv is where you need to go he throw in england but yeah that makes sense a portuguese international a hazen uxbridge ladies champ which i'm guessing is a local competition and berkshire county player and people listening might not understand but her Q-tip there is 8.7 mil. Yeah. And we said obviously that Kirsty's was 
very small at 7.5. And obviously there's one, only 1 1.2 millimetre difference. But that is a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it makes a big difference. I think um, I think someone like Chris Mellon has a very small tip, doesn't he? Um, yes, it, not, not majorly, but yes. Yeah, quite he, I a mean, small tip. Chris Mellon can pick up any cue, I think. Yeah, um, but just because he wants to be able to do more in terms of the, the white ball moving it around. I'm trying to think of the player that has a very small tip. I think it's Callum Singleton. Right, from okay. Memory. Yeah. It's got very, very small tips, sort of down to in the sixes, possibly. They range from usually around six and a half mil up to around ten. You don't yeah. see many at ten, but you do see quite a lot around nine. Yeah. I think it, uh, it's just obviously a lot easier. If you've got a slightly bigger tip, it's, it's easier not to put accidental side on a ball. Spent a little bit of time with ultimate pool professional number one. Still, Shane Thompson. Yeah. There we go. And he summed it up by saying, it's just all about trying to find the centre of the cue ball. Yeah. And that is easier with a bigger tip. Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't impressed when I replied before, why can't we just swing everything in my side? <laughs> <laughs> no, Shane's... I like watching Shane, actually, because he's so accurate with the white, but he keeps things as... He's one of those that keeps things as simple as possible. Very, very pleasing on the eye, that cue action. All the long cue actions are, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so chance on on red here, but I think she's got a bit too much angle on the one in the middle. Just had a little message through on just while we're talking about tips. But Emma's sister will refer to us. <laughs> okay. She gives she gives enough uh, <laughs> out to her sister, doesn't she? Yeah. I suppose Emma's sister yep. uses a seven millimeter tip. Right. Thank you very okay. much. To the lady that sent me that message. Which is very small again. Yeah. Uh, Mary's Mary's a very capable player though. She talks herself down a lot. Um but very capable, so obviously works for her. I don't oh. think I'd be any good with something that small. I'm a big fan of Emma's sister. Yeah. She's lovely to be around. Yeah. And behaved herself impeccably this weekend. Instead yeah, of coming on here. It's and early yet, though. It is. It's early yet. Last time she just came on here and called her sister Emily <laughs> constantly. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, called her Emily. That's it. <laughs> so everything going in the direction of Kirsty Lee Davies so far. And she just looks like she's warming up. Tricky little finish here though, you want to work your route out before you start hotting balls, uh, especially with the one near the side cushion. Yeah, you could tell she'd like to have hit that a lot softer, but yeah. needed to get the cue ball out. The harder you hit them when they're on the cushion, the less chance of them dropping, is that right? Yeah, 100%. Um, she's left a chance at a skill shot here for Ilda. Don't hit it hard. Just a nice pace, that's a nice pace, but it just wasn't quite accurate enough. Yeah, I think she did overhit that slightly, and I think if you if you did hit it a little bit softer, you could have left the white behind the black, and then even if you didn't get the skill shot, you left an awkward first shot. Um, whereas obviously Kirst is now in the middle. Apologies for that. Yeah, if you the the mistake you see in the amateur game an awful lot when trying to perform a combination shot is too much pace. Yeah. You just play them at nice pace, even like you just said, on the slow side of things. Yeah. The cannon not helping her especially has yeah. given herself a chance. Yeah, I think that's okay because now she just needs to drift it in and she'll be she'll have a shot of the black. Yeah, I think that cue ball's just going to miss the eight on the way through. Hopefully, yeah. certainly looks like it is. But if she pops this thin, you never know. Looks thick, and it is thick. Yeah. It stayed on the table. So a chance for Ilda to get herself into this match. You have to cue this properly, though, with it being so deep in the bag, you get right into it to go behind the red, um, stretching as well. 
a good shot. Going to be pressure on this. This will be a little bit of a tester. Will she pay it with safety in mind and make the pot slightly more difficult, or will she fully commit? You just have to fully commit here for me. I don't think the which she and did. It's going close to the centre, not quite. I think she's. Um, I don't think she cued that particularly well. I think she she may have felt the pressure of the situation. Yeah, you just feel like. You know, that was a chance to get back in the match and yeah. make a game of it. And the thing is, yes, it's only... Wow, she's left this out. This is a little bit... Yeah, little I'm bit surprised. A touchy, this is. Maybe the angle was a bit offish, but I thought she may have screwed back to play the black in the opposite middle. I'll just let her pot this eight, or attempt this eight for 3-0. Yeah, good they job. Oh, very confident. Yeah, yeah so what I was going to say was, yes, it's only to decide <laughs> who comes first and who finishes second in the group but it it can be more than that you might run into this opponent a little bit later on the quarter yeah. final you just never know and if you're in you do draw them and you're back in this arena you know both players are going to be thinking about that previous result yeah I think for Ilda as well as far as I'm aware I'm not sure about previous events but I don't think she's got much experience out there on the TV table um, so you just you want to go out there and, and win a couple of frames. You don't want to go out there and get whitewashed and then that be your memory of your first time on, that, on the TV table. Absolutely, Amy. Absolutely. The mental side of the game is massive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suspect that that lady there is quite headstrong yeah. given her previous two World Championship wins. She looks a little bit bored, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah, she does a bit, yeah. <coughs> Fed up. Do I really have to be here? I've already <laughs> qualified. Yeah. Oh, it's cursed his break next to do. What do you mean? You're the expert. Yes, it is Kirsty's break. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. I just waited for her to stand on. <laughs> so. <A> little trick. <laughs> so she's switching to side break. She broke from the middle last time. Yeah, the cut break. Nice. Should be pleased with that. Lots of movement on all object balls. Still looks massively unimpressed though. Yellows look like her choice. If this one that she's played on, I think she's played on it, so I assume it goes, the one near the left. Um, if that goes, it's a decent chance. Does it pass, Amy? I think it does. Yeah. I think it does, and if it does, you've got to take it now, surely. Yeah. Well, okay. what do I know? What do we know? Absolutely nothing. Maybe it doesn't go. Maybe slightly too much angle, it didn't wow. go. She played a good shot. That though. is exceptional, that is. Yeah. Let's take another look at this. Very well judges. It's the cannon into the red to judge it and use the use the red to screw back off, guaranteeing a position up the table. Yeah. Superb. Little bit surprised she didn't take that yellow straight away though. Is it possible, lady, that the eight ball really only goes into the bottom centre as we look at the table? So she might be thinking, leave it till last. If she mm. can get on where, you know, if she put part of the cuba where it is now, which would be very difficult. Is there an argument here to play, if we're looking at three yellows across the table, the middle of the three, down to yeah, the bottom? Yeah, I, th I think you have to. Um, I mean, would like to avoid the cannon on the one over the pocket, I'm sure. And yeah. has done, but hasn't potted the yellow. I think that was the yeah. shot. And then if she was to screw back off that yellow across the table to where she was, she just has to... Yeah. Drop the yellow into the corner for the eight in the centre, possibly. For me, I'd have got rid of the one on the left-hand side a little bit earlier and played for the black in the in the top left off the two in the middle. And um, nothing wrong with that. But we obviously all see it a little bit differently. She's the one out there, so. Absolutely. Um, but she has left a chance for Ilda here because I think that red does go past the yellow. Not now. 
Um, I think it did, previous to that shot. Yeah, not anymore. She's given herself a little bit of a headache there. just see that as she delivers the cue there's just a little bit of movement yeah she lifts up ever so slightly a stark difference to the bullet straight cue action of Kirsty yeah not there's anything wrong with a little bit of movement look at some of the top snooker players yeah and I think Paul is very different to snooker as well the cue action is not obviously it's, it's nice to have a great cue action but it's not as important as it is in snooker absolutely She's the double but gone in off. This match starting to get a little bit too far away from Ilda. A couple of unforced errors have given Kirsty a second chance in more than one frame. Has got an extension, I suspect it may be used here. She's still undecided as to where to park the cue ball. Yeah, because obviously where the balls are positioned, you want to take the one on the left-hand side where you can ball in hand and be perfect on it. But then it's about how you get on the black from, from the other two balls. Each player gets one extension per game. Gives them an extra 15 seconds, which they can use at any point. Especially useful when we get to 10 minutes, if we get to 10 minutes, when players will only have 15 seconds per shot. So here we go, she's gone the same way she originally planned, but she's not straight on this yellow. So she's gonna be forced, if she wants to play on it, into the center to play a soft screw. So now she's looking at your shot which has a little bit more margin for error. Yeah, and I think that's, you almost guarantee yourself a shot. Um. Look at that. Doesn't want to be hampered by this red though. So this has now gone from a, you'd say eight, nine out of 10 to maybe five or six. Yeah, she's far enough away from the red to make it okay. I, I think she'll get this, yeah get in that pocket it was told to go there yeah she's had enough hasn't she she wants to get done bullet straight yeah. maybe she wants to change that drink who knows but it's been good so far yeah as a as a contender for the weekend's event amy you probably are looking at a rival right there if you didn't know already i'm sure you did Oh, everyone's a rival. You can't write off anybody. But yeah, Kirsty, you'd be certainly put her in the top five favourites for the tournament. Probably a bit higher if she was playing a bit more. I'm not going to ask you who you fancy for the tournament because that would be rude. You are one of the favourites. And if you didn't say yourself, I'd be disappointed. <coughs> but who do you fancy for the seniors event? Um, I think... I don't know... Further down the seniors, I don't know too many of the players. I only really know the top guys, but I think I think it will come from Kenny, Dylan or Ronan. I know that's not exactly a brave shout. Three um, of them. Picked all three. Yeah, I'd no, like come to on, see... come on, you can have one. I'll go Dylan. Dylan. I like yeah, Dylan. Dylan's one um, of my picks, usually. Yeah. Dylan and Neil Davey, I picked. Neil Davey, yeah, very solid player. you got o Ole Bales here as well, isn't he? Ole, uh, Ole Keith, the Keith, nuisance Bale. Keith Brewer get to the final Keith last Brewer time? Keith Brewer did. He lost yeah. in a six-bed shootout to Ronan. I just feel that, oh, it really has just been a catastrophe this match. For yeah. Ilda. <laughs> Nothing has gone right. She's had half chances and not been able to make them. Have there been any shocks in the seniors so far? Well, wow, they're all kind of group matches and they're only very short, a sure. little bit shorter than the ladies. You race to five, the seniors race to three. So a lot of matches have only lasted eight, nine minutes. Yeah. And that's very common. As you well know, you're very capable of taking out three finishes in a row, I am sure. Yeah, so I wouldn't say shocks. No, those at the top of the group, when you look down the tables, you'd expect to you be expect, there. Yeah. Just... It all heats up tomorrow. Tomorrow's yeah. the pressure day. And like you said, there's so many in there. I just think 
with Ronan, he's the man in form, he's the guy to beat. Yeah. Is it going to come to end? I wouldn't be surprised to see him lift the, lift the trophy, but no. how long can a man just keep on winning for? Yeah, It's I mean, incredible. It's amazing, especially with the standard now in the pro and general in a men's game to have won what he has recently is incredible. As we see a great pot by Kirsty once again. Can she pop this one up into the top right-hand pocket and screw down into the yellow and red below? I'm not sure. It looks a, a deep, deep screw. I think she might yeah, have too much angle. That's what she's playing. Off, oh, off using the, the eight ball. Yeah, good shot. That was fantastic. And just look how she's landed here. I think she's okay here. Just look at this again. We saw her play one like this earlier on in the match, and this has been judged again to perfection. Yeah. Look at that. Superb. Well, it's a reverse double. Missed what she tried to do there. I thought she had room to screw up kind of into the black. Yeah, I think she had a little bit... I think too it was a bit much, thinner than that. Too much angle, yeah. yeah okay. So this is very thin. She's going to try and cut this back into the right centre pocket, is she? Well, what's she looking at here? Oh, no, she can't play the. She can't play my shot. It's just too thin. Yeah. What has she got in mind? Double off the yellow or a cocked yeah. hat? Yeah. I don't cocked hat's tight. The cock hat is very tight. What we mean by a cock hat, for those watching mirrors that don't get that, is three cushions into the top centre pocket. Yeah, tried to play it off the yellow. It was tough. That was very, very high tariff. Yeah. That would have been a contender for finish of the tournament. Yeah, 100%. So, is Ilda going to start the comeback? I think you've got to play a snooker here, haven't you, after... I'd certainly be playing the snooker off the one yeah, she which she's closest to. She can't be feeling great, and but there is only 16 minutes on the clock. You've got to give yourself time to win four. So she played a safety but off a different ball, um, which is fine. I'd have just like to, to have played off the one in the middle to bring the difficult ball into play. It would make it easier to go for it next time, in my opinion. I think she'll get very close to this, Amy. Yeah. It's yes, only one will. cushion. She needs to hit it around half ball and send it into that top centre pocket. The shot, this shot is very much on. I don't think we'll see her play it too hard. Oh, she's missed it altogether. Really did fancy her for that, didn't you? Yeah, I thought she'd get close. She likes that sort of, sh sort of shot normally. Um, but these cushions do react a little bit differently to how you normally expect. Do you mean the sliding? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, by sliding, just coming off at a slightly different angle, sort of <coughs> sliding as if you're playing with a running side. So, opting for the attack. There's risk yeah. attached to this because she will leave Kirsty Lee Davies an attempt at the red if she misses it. But throwing caution to the wind, it's not gone in. Very, very thin cut. She won't have any control over the cue ball here. No, and it's, I mean, its you just got to concentrate on the pot and if you if you get it, have a swing at the black. I don't think you can play too much position here. Unless she thinks she can screw it off the cushion. The pot looks good. She's avoided Operation. the double kiss and she's on the eight. What a result. What a performance. Yeah, she played well. Five nil. I'm sure you're going to see a handshake. Both players through to the main event. A little reminder for those watching on YouTube that was our last match. If you want to watch even more, head over to ultimatepools.tv and use the sign up code BF10. I'd like to wish the very best of luck to my co commentator. She's one of my favourites to watch. I'm sure she will go deep. Thank you, Amy Beecham. Thank you. We will be back with another match just in a couple of ticks. One frame away from the title, Tom Cousins needs to win three straight frames in the next 11 minutes or Jordan Shepard will be 
the champion. He'll be happy to make a ball, Excellent. not worried about the golden break. Asking for the balls to stop there. I think he was asking for the red near the right centre pocket to stop. Well, Jordan can play a real clever shot, which he's looking at, which is red, yellow, off the red in the centre pocket. But he's got to play it slowly in hold position on the other yellow. Perfect. Yellow balls in play. This match is over. The chance is now there. That was the key shot to get into the visit. Yellows all have a pocket. Eight ball is in the open. Yeah, he might play for the gap between the reds here. And he has. And that's made the finish a lot easier. It's going to go corner. Oh, sorry, centre. Middle. 15 second shot clock in play. Corner and corner. I'm a little bit surprised he's played for this one. That would have been my last ball to get on the eight ball in the centre pocket, but he's obviously feeling great out there. And who can begrudge him this title after the performances he's, he's put in this week? And he's had to come through the hard way as well. Two balls away. He's certainly feeling it. You can see it. He's going to leave himself a little cut on the eight ball. This eight ball for the title of Ultimate Pool Pro Cup champion. And it's there. Jordan Shepard is your champion. A brilliant performance to take down Tom Cousins, who came into the match as the favourite with the form he showed. But Jordan Shepard, with brilliant performance after brilliant performance, to get his hands on the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup title. What a brilliant match from two great players, but it is the Welsh Wizard that takes home the title. The presentation comes up next. Um, unbelievable, really. Uh, like I said earlier, someone said to me at 5-1 down, had he still even beaten this woman from the first round? I would, I would have called him crazy, but here we are. Like Chris said, he said, oh, your name's on the trophy. Obviously, I didn't b believe him, but now, now it's there. Hopefully I can, I can keep it. Um, this, this tournament win obviously comes as a bigger, bigger surprise to me than anyone. Hardly, I was lucky to, um, to be given the chance to play full time three, four months ago, snooker. And pool was obviously, I've always, always played, but being um, the second, must have commit, uh, commitment. Uh, and yeah, I'm just all over the moon, just lost words. Where does this title rank in your eight ball career? It must be right right up there. I think this is the hardest tournament I've ever won by by a good bit. I don't think you'll ever have, have a harder route, will you? No, I don't think so, no. The, the group of death. Then obviously Liam was in good form, Jack was obviously playing great, and then Tom as well. Yeah, absolutely over the moon. Brilliant performance, mate. It's time to bring in Lee Kendall for the presentations. Enjoy the moment. It's all yours. You, Jordan you. Shepard, everyone.
Well, a very warm welcome back. And for the final time on YouTube, this is what we have seen so far today <laughs> or this evening. Sarah Tragic with a 5-2 victory over Kerry Griffiths. Mika Rooney 5-1 over Sharon Lund. And then we've just seen a brilliant performance from the two-time world champion Kirsty Lee Davis 5-0 over Ildo Machado, Kirsty looking very, very dangerous indeed. Potentially her first ultimate full title this week if she continues that form. We have three more matches coming up this evening. Vicky Lomax versus Holly Can is our next match. And then we're going to have a couple of world champions to round off the day. Chloe Payne, one of the rising stars in the women's game. She'll be taking on Emma Cunningham, the four times world champion. And then the current number one, Harriet Haynes, will be taking on Cheryl Dickinson to round out the day. If you would like to watch those final three games, then you're going to have to go to Ultimate Pool TV or the Ultimate Pool app as we are about to end here on YouTube. There is a promo code out there for Black Friday. If you haven't subscribed already, already, then the promo code BF10 will get you a discount. Or you can subscribe on a monthly basis. There is a huge amount coming for the rest of this year and for 2023. So it really is worth the money. And I would highly recommend subscribing. So thank you for your company here on YouTube. And uh, hope you come across and join us on Ultimate Pool TV.